Hey guys, so today I thought I'd do I'd bring you along in my day again, but I also wanted to talk a lot about things that people, questions that have come up from my last, um, what I do in a week as a professional golfer. And I think there's quite a few questions that were similar and that people have questions about. So I think I'm just going to bring you along and answer them on the way. And obviously one of the most biggest questions that were asked is how do I maintain this lifestyle like obviously in my what's in the what I do in a week I didn't earn any sort of income all I did was practice I didn't teach I didn't do anything of that sort so I'll bring you guys along today and I'll talk a little bit about the questions that you guys have and also just about professional life in general so I hope you guys stay tuned and I'll see you later. Hey guys, so I'm out at TPC. Um, it is about nine something right now and it's Monday. So the driving range doesn't open that early. So that's why I don't come that early because it's only open at three. So yeah, there's no point really coming that early unless you really want to do like eight hours of short game. But anyway, I want to talk about something which people have asked me about which is how I pay for practice you know like driving range balls and playing and stuff like that and actually I'm I mean if you follow me you know that I'm actually a TPCKL golf ambassador and one of the benefits of that is that I'm able to play here for free and I'm able to practice here for free as well so that is a huge weight off my shoulders like TPC giving me this sponsorship obviously makes my practice a lot easier because I can hit as many balls as I want and not have to think about okay I just wasted 50 bucks on 200 balls like now I have to earn back that 50 bucks that sort of mentality you know obviously like when you are constantly having to think about everything that you have to pay for for practice it, it accumulates really fast so I'm super super thankful to have TPC as, an MS, uh, as a sponsor and I mean that is just kind of the reality of it if you don't have a sponsor life being a professional golfer gets really expensive really quick and I think a lot of people know that like if you play golf you know that golf can be really expensive but yeah for me my training is mostly covered like unless I go play at another golf course and even then um, I think a lot of people have this misconception that we just show our pro cards and we get to play anywhere for free that's not true on certain courses we do get a pro rate which is really really nice because then we get to kind of change up the conditions you know like when we play in Malaysia for example we're not going to be always be playing like top conditions such as TPC so it's good to sometimes practice other courses as well just to be able to practice in other conditions and you know like cow grass and that kind of thing so yeah when I play outside I do have to pay but usually it's like less than 150 ringgit which is really cheap for golf so yeah other than that, um, I think it's kind of, I feel like a lot of people now, it, it's kind of becoming, it's getting more in the news, you know, I've seen a couple podcasts recently about LPGA players and how like even good players such as Angel Yin, like, you know, she's played in Solheim Cups and even then she doesn't have a lot of sponsors. And it's, it's quite funny because it's kind of a chicken and egg scenario, like these people are the LPGA Tour and obviously the pay is so much less than the PGA Tour. But it's even worse for us like smaller tours like i tour in china and taiwan and sometimes you know you might make the cut and still not be able to cover your cost so that's just the reality of it and sometimes um when you when you play on well that's kind of part of being a professional golfer because you kind of need to invest in yourself before you are able to make money and you know my parents have been investing in me ever since i started golf and started playing golf competitively i've paid for range balls and memberships and rounds of golf my entire life up until the point that i turned pro and was lucky enough to get the sponsorship but before that everything was paid like my parents paid for everything you know i would go to i'll go find like like i remember if you guys know monteras golf club they used to have this driving range promo thing where you like after a certain amount of time certain i think it was like 3 p.m or something you could hit as many balls as you want so i used to go there every single day and just like hit balls because i was like okay like you pay like 10 ringgit or something and you hit as many balls versus like if you go to one place and it's 10 ringgit for 100 balls so i would legit like go to these kind of places and like hit 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 so yeah it's quite funny it's it's like you don't have you can't get sponsors when you're an amateur and it's golf is expensive you know so my parents have already made the investment in me and now it's like 
once I turn pro, it's kind of like trying to find sponsors so that I can continue pursuing this. And yeah, it's, it's not an easy life. <laughs> Nobody has ever said that it's an easy life and anybody that has tried to play professionally will know that it's not easy because even though you don't want to think about money, you don't earn a lot of money and you need to invest a lot before you make money. And I think a lot of people are just like, oh, you know, like golfers are super rich, so they don't need sponsorships. Um, maybe 1% of the golfers that are, you know, super rich, rich, I mean, I'm sure there are a lot of golfers that are really rich that just could cover everything by themselves. But in general, for most of the people that I know, most of the people on tour that I've met, even my friends, we all rely on sponsorships. So yeah, sponsorships are a big thing. And that is obviously one of the main ways of me continuing pursuing this career and basically how I'm able to cover the cost for my practice every day. So yeah, now let's go do some short game and then we'll talk more later. So see you guys later. It is now 5.03 and I'm done with practice. So I'm about to drive home and I promise when I go home, take a shower, I will answer the question that you guys probably have been waiting for me to answer, which is how I make money. So I'll see you back home. Okay guys, so let's get down to it. Probably the reason why you clicked on this video is because you wanted to know basically how I make money to be able to play golf every day. So obviously now it's a different time. We can't compete normally when we're competing. Obviously we would rely on um, how tournaments go. When we make the cut, we make money. And you know, I think a lot of people think that we make a ton of money. That is usually not the case. Even when you're playing on a really big tour, you do probably have to get about a top 10 or maybe top 15 finish to be really good in terms of covering costs and everything but as i said before there's a lot of investment that goes beforehand so there is a lot of cost that needs to be covered so how i earn money to basically cover for that cost number one of course it's if you have sponsorships that's why people are always looking for sponsorships because you need money to be able to go for tournaments or to go for Q school to even qualify for a tour. So now, besides all that, like a lot of people obviously saw that I didn't do anything in terms of monetary gain during my what I do in a week. So let me just kind of tell you guys what I do. So obviously the first thing that you can do to get money as a golfer is to coach. But the thing with coaching is first up, you need to like be signed to an what would you say that like a not a not a company but like well basically a company like a coaching company to be able to get a coaching job but um the reason why i don't do that number one is if i start touring again it's not really fair to my students and number two it's also that like 
I don't think I have the time to dedicate to my students. So if I train eight hours a day, that leaves a really small window for coaching. And I would have to accommodate all my students into that time. And I wouldn't be accommodate, be able to accommodate my students. Um, how would I say this? Like I feel like if you're a coach, you need to be able to be focused on your students rather than yourself. And right now, obviously, I'm a lot more focused on myself and my own game. And also number three, I do not have any kind of coaching certificate. So I did not go for like a coaching course, which I do think a lot of people don't think it's necessary anymore in this day and age. But I mean, I don't know. I don't have the credentials to coach, but um, I think I can give people benefits in different ways. So something like what I do on YouTube, um, so like going out on a golf course and teaching people how to play golf, like actually play golf rather than working on a swing. So I think that that is where I can help people and that is what I do sometimes as well. So help people on the golf course, not like with swing stuff, but like just improving the game that they already have. Um, so that's one of the ways. Number two is I do events. So I do a lot of um, kind of like beat the pro events where we basically get hired by a company when they have like tournaments, like corporate events or whatever it is. And we basically become like a, what would you call that? Like a special guest for the event. And what we normally do is we usually stand on a par three and then we hit shots or we hit, um, for instance, on a par three, we hit a shot. And then if you hit it closer than us, you get a gift. Or sometimes it's for charity or you donate money to a charity. So it really depends on the event. But that is one of the other things that I do. Obviously, events are a little bit sparse at this moment in time. And a lot of them um, are being cancelled because of COVID and stuff. So that's not a very steady source of income. But also in the previous event that I did, I actually did my first MCing job. So if you guys didn't know, I also I, I did communications in college. So a lot of this is something that I actually find very interesting. And I do not have any professional experience emceeing, but obviously I did a lot of that in my course in college. I just, I mean, it's part of my course, like public speaking and stuff like that. So that was a very, very fun experience for me. Um, so yeah, in terms of events and emceeing, that is another source of income. And a third source is actually I am, um, what would you call that? Not, not a guest writer, but I actually write for a magazine. Um, a publication here in Malaysia so it's called Par Golf and every month I actually write an article for them so that is we kind of have an agreement and they are also the, the company that also helps me get a lot of events so yeah we kind of work hand in hand with this company and they just basically let me write whatever I want to write with regards to professional life um, golf in college, stuff like that, like junior golf. So I, I find that very fun as well. And also, obviously, that's part of something that I did in college as well. Like with communication, I did a lot of writing. So yeah, that's something else that I do. And obviously, the, the other met method, I think this is the fourth, fourth method that I'm saying, yeah, is um, through social media. So through something like Instagram, actually, I do not earn any sort of profit i do not do any kind of um sponsorship deals with them with anybody on instagram instagram is really just my it's my platform that i started off on just to really kind of get myself out there kind of expose myself to the world i mean it's part of being a professional athlete that's how you get sponsorships people don't know you people people don't go out chasing people to sponsor most of the times you do need to look for your own sponsors so Instagram is just my source of, it's kind of like my picture diary where I just upload things like swings and stuff like that. And it's super fun to see in like five years and to see how far I've come, see how, you know, all the things that I've experienced. So I find Instagram to just be like a personal diary for myself. It's not something that I have any monetary gain out of, but um, YouTube. So obviously YouTube, I started doing it during this MCO and a lot of people actually have been asking me to do it since since I've done videos on Instagram so I finally had the time to do it this um, lockdown so that's why I started doing it and I think obviously I got monetized I think a month into doing it and 
I've been putting a lot of work into it, so I hope you guys enjoy it. And obviously, I don't do it for the monetary gain. I do it because there's so much satisfaction when I hear somebody come up to me and they're like, "Oh, you helped improve my game," and it's so nice to know that I can do that just by creating these videos. And I'm I'm glad that you guys are enjoying it so much. So it's obviously not just for the monetary gain. If it is, then I would not be putting up. I'll just be putting up an hour long video and you know just try to make as much money as I can from it. But I'm really trying to put out content that I hope people will enjoy and can benefit from, and that is what I'm doing with YouTube. And obviously, the other thing is I I just feel like I have been very lucky. You know, obviously I have, like I said before, like TPC helps me cover all my costs. Um, obviously, like Titus and Footjoy helps me cover my costs with like golf balls, gloves, practice gear, clothes, things like that. Um, my coach, Impact Golf, uh, he's really good with basically helping me whenever I need. He pro provides me with like fittings, you know, shafts, grips, all that. That ad adds up really quickly as well. So I've been very lucky to meet a lot of generous people who are able to help me along the way, and also. Um, even Matt, you know, golf psychic here on YouTube. I I know a lot of you guys come from there, and he helped me a lot to get me monetized on YouTube. So, I mean, he has such a huge following, and somehow we just met each other online, and he thought that I was a good candidate for his videos. And without him, obviously, with his help, it really grew my YouTube really quick. So I'm really thankful for everybody that has helped me. So that this all goes towards. Me trying to progress and get further in my golfing career, as I said, it is an investment. So, um, maybe I can talk about Q school more next time. But all this takes money, and yeah. So this is some of the ways that I do earn a living to sustain my life as a professional golfer, and I hope that answers your questions. And if you guys have any more, please leave them down below, and. Yeah, so every time you guys watch videos on YouTube, um, obviously I know sometimes the ads are annoying and stuff like that, but they all obviously go towards. I hope you find it beneficial. I mean, I hope you find it worth it because you know that it's benefiting me and my golfing career. So yeah, sometimes the ads are annoying, and I know that, but uh, it's kind of part of YouTube. And yeah, so every time you guys watch all the way, every time you guys watch the ads. Every time you guys comment and like, it really helps me. So, just wanted to give you guys a shout out and thank you guys so much for following me on this journey. And I hope to keep creating content that you guys will continue watching. And yeah, that's all for today. Um, hope you guys enjoyed that. Hope that gave a light on kind of what I do and how I earn money. Money and yeah, thank you guys so much. And see you guys next time. And again, thank you for supporting my journey here on YouTube. Lots of love. Ha <laughs> ha.